There was a lot of argument early on about, you know, where the preps were being played. There's still one or two people that play a slightly different list that makes room for uh, animated broomstick as well. Um, but I think overall the deck has homogenized fairly nicely into uh, what we are seeing from most of our players now as well. A uh, quick clarification, Lorinda is virtually waving his arms at me after I gave him so much credit today of what wonderful work he's been doing feeding his information. He he blundered, he choked. He is not the seasoned competitor that Tice is. And when it mattered the most, he, uh, he got it wrong. J4 is not guaranteed to be in the bottom four if he loses. He is currently one place outside the relegation zone as it stands. And so it is inherently possible that he does finish in that position as well at the end of the week. Now to Fenler and uh, just say that the message saying that that was wrong was there before Sotl said it, so Sotl also choked. <laughs> How would the opposite of that be true? What? <laughs> you heard me. Okay. <laughs> hey, though, no too many big surprises here from the opening from Psycho. It does have Quest, does have Tusk Piercer. What should I but again, it, it's a, it feels a lot more difficult to get Brute down, even though it is just that one mana increase, because it's a whole additional yeah. card draw, right? And and a lot yeah. of the times we've seen Brutes just playable in the past, right? You like you just do enough to make a Brute zero cost. Yeah, yeah, it's like you draw all your cards and then the quest procs, right? And then suddenly everything becomes possible right. when that extra one mana discount to everything comes in. Just take that away. There's the plus one mana, right? And you can see quite simply how much uh, trickier it gets to get those really nasty early bro brute boards down. Very possible still. Um, but again, I think just that toning down of those screenshots that you will have all seen of just four eight nines in play on turn three, um, it's just infinitely less likely now. Pretty lackluster discover there from Psycho. Short. Gonna go for the skull as the only really good card on offer. Obviously the, the other two do things, but nowhere near as powerful as Skull. The only problem is he has to get Brute out of his hand in a lot of circumstances to be able to drop that skull, unless he's just hoping for a glide at some point, honestly. Yeah, I think Glide is going to be a card that is on Psycho's wish list this game. We saw in APAC, I don't know how much you saw of it, but oh my goodness, APAC was a Glide exhibition today. In particular, in a one series with Alutemu, who was just torturing his opponent with Glide time after time after time at the perfect time, uh, particularly in this matchup as well, where any time uh, it looked like a any kind of rogue plan was coming together, Glide would come along and ruin it. And it's really the core to the matchup, I would say, with Demon Hunter going up against Rogue, mm -hmm. because all things being equal, Rogue will get there before Demon Hunter, I would say, in terms of activating their combo kill. But the fact of the matter is Demon Hunter just has a much more powerful way to disrupt. Uh, Colt Neophyte and Shadow Step and so on is disruption, but Glide is ridiculous disruption to what Rogue is able to do. Meanwhile, right. yeah, gonna be zero mana spectral sight, zero mana philosophies, but that brute is only going to get down to two with that spectral, even if it gets ripped here. Yeah, and I'm even wondering, like, Psycho will be tempted to take the spectral, yeah, but I was wondering if you hold on to it and just rely on the fact that you can play the next card you draw and then get the spectral active next turn. Mm hmm. A weird turn for J4 as well. Like, he has the Octo obviously already on board. He could go like Neophyte Prize Plunderer to proc it, but he's then spending like two cards to proc an Octo on a relatively lackluster hand at that point. So I think he might just go. Oh, he's going to go Neo. I thought we were just going to Shroud this turn and called it a day. What should I order? I kind of like just getting more resources in hand. I'm not really sure what he's expecting. Like, just what, Neo fight one thief and go? Yeah, that's the question, right? Is like, is there significant fear on the other side? But generally, like, this is the problem, right? And it's where Glide really starts to play tricks with your mind because some players convince themselves not to play this matchup in a conventional fashion and just do things like this instead, right? Which plays around Glide. Because, again, if you just go shroud go to your opponent and you have what like an eight or nine card hand sitting there with an octobot on board 
Uh, Psycho has the potential even to just like hero power your Octobot to proc it and then discounted Glide everything <laughs> away at that point. Like Glide is just such a dis uh, disgusting card overall that I think playing around it does make a lot of sense. Well, that's painful. Double four mana acrobatics. Not really what Psycho was looking for. Mm -hmm. But again, at this point, with, with Psycho seeing how J4 is approaching the game so far, obviously he doesn't know what's in hand for J4, but how fast does Psycho actually need to go if he's seeing, you know, a, a fairly medium level Octo proc, I think it's fair to say. Well, the fear, I think, is still just the minions that you're facing down, right? Which is, I think, the other reason why I do like playing this. Again, the matchup is slightly different depending on whether you're playing against a, an OTK version of the deck or just, you know, the brute version of the deck because, yes, this hybrid version does have the ability to clear and remove with uh, Immolation or and Fell Screen Blast, for example, but it's way less good at doing it than, say, Fell Demon Hunter or even the hybrid Fell OTK <laughs> hybrid Demon Hunter. Yeah. yeah. Um, so you can just get there with board pressure a lot of the time as well, which is why I support this idea of just play your stuff, be aggressive even more with this version of the deck. And I just like this curve that J4 is playing with uh, aggressive minions, cult neophyte, block the quest progression, and now just look for like a, a buff golem even with uh, Kazakas to be able to curb this out. Especially with Shadow Step, I wouldn't even mind if he gets plus one, plus one to just play it and step and play it again. Mm-hmm. The other option is to go... Oh, I think he got it. Yeah, the other option there was to go five and then look for the spot where you right. can hit summon a copy as well. Yep, slight, yep, slight issue there. <laughs> Push there, so less damage. He, so he changed his mind halfway yeah. through the turn. I think he was going to attack with the Neophyte, step the Neophyte, and then just buff everything once, and then changed his mind to stepping the plus one, plus one instead, which... Um, obviously, it's a mistake, but uh, you know, in the end, a couple of points of missed damage is not the most catastrophic thing in the world. And but again, you uh, you have to point it out, right? The difference in, I suppose, keeping your call cool in a very similar situation that we're seeing from a newcomer like J4 and a big veteran from Tice in the previous yep. series. And I think the the problem, I guess, for J4 is both plays had merit, right? Like, obviously, bouncing yes. a Neo fight, it's not like he tried to do a bad play then bailed out of it. Both plays had merit. It's just he, he decided to favor the, the other one halfway through. So a little bit unfortunate, missed some damage, but as you mentioned, not the end of the world. But also, at the same time, it could be. I think you know, a big part of the reason why I like the aggressive push from the damage is because he has that fireball Ooh. backed up in hand. In the end, there's just nothing there that Psycho could have done. But for example, uh, by the same merit, I like doing Shadow Step buff because it pushes extra damage and you have the fireball in hand to back that up. But of course, by the same merit, if you miss a couple of points of damage with the attack order, then that fireball might have just ended up being one or two points right. short lethal in the end, right? So it could have been disastrous in the end. But J4, he got there. Yeah, look. <laughs> temple tap in the end, kind of the reverse ironic temple tap in the <laughs> yeah. end in that case, as opposed to the genuine one. Uh, but J4 did enough. You know, it's, it's step one for the rogue. He got there. He's still on course for the uh, the rogue sweep, which seems to be the story of the second half of the day now, Raven. Yeah, really good start for J4. And honestly, a, a pretty abysmal start for Psycho. And it's not particularly anything he did. He just didn't, with the hand he had, he just didn't really get to play the game. His discover option early on, he picked Skull because it was the only good card but as i mentioned the brute on the far left meant he had to get the brute active and playable to even think about playing skull and it all just messed up and you can really see that the lack of glide really being a huge factor for psycho i think yeah the lack of glide i'm not sure if um one cheaper brute would have had any significant impact on that but it is a theme that's developing through the day where we're starting to see little moments of the nerfed decks, the decks that have been you know, quite deliberately slowed down in very real terms, 
being too slow, right? We've seen yeah. it from Quest yeah, Shaman 100%. being too slow. We've seen it from Warlock being too slow. Now we've seen it from Demon Hunter, Brute Demon Hunter as well, being too slow as well. So interested to see how that develops over the course of the weekend, over the course of multiple regions. Will we see a trend where the players who have gone with more new decks coming in, the the big warriors, the Anaconda Druid, I suppose you can throw into there. It's not a new deck, but it's kind of a different deck in Grandmasters, the Librum Paladins, that kind of thing. Uh, whether those decks will end up being more successful than the players who have gone more with the well these were the good decks they're worse now but they're probably still the good deck strategy that we're seeing from some of the other people well importantly as well although we've just had the patch so it is new and it is understandable that maybe some of the players haven't really got behind it fast enough for this week but i'll be very interested and in, well guess what next week's the last week to earn points for, yeah. So what are you going to bring there? You know, there needs to clearly there's still a lot of work to be done on this meta to really refine lineups. So we'll see if uh, the time's going to be used wisely next week or so. But for now, we're ready to dive into game number two, and it is going to be that Garot Rogue Mirror. And again, for Psycho, he is. Favoring the one Foxy Fraud, the one one Thief build. I was just looking in case there was a Mancrick or something because you have to when you look at Psycho deck lists. Uh, just have a quick glance, but no, he's playing a fairly standard version of this style. I was just looking at Psycho's list to uh, see if there was a Reno in there, but no, he did play some two ofs in the end, so I decided against it. And here, though, although there's double field contact psych, uh, in J4's hand, apologies, Psycho seems to have the overall better hand and more well-rounded options, right? Yeah, I would say so. And you see the nod, almost the look of resignation already on J4's face of, yep, opponent had Octobot. I'm in trouble because even a double field contact hand is probably just straight up too slow in this position when your opponent is octobotting and you are not. Oh, and you, and you know you're scared when your opponent's about to drop a field contact on turn three. That's not what you want to see. Plunderer there. Some nods from J4. Psycho's going to keep going with the card draw. Yeah, I think if the previous turn was maybe a look of resignation, that is a definite look of resignation from J4 because that is just a tough opening to beat. Can be done. He certainly should not be giving this up just yet. He has a couple of removal tools that will be able to fight back against this, but that shadow step has made things extremely interesting on this turn. It is going to be the contact coming back. Okay. Yeah, we're getting close to J4 just handing in his resignation at this point because this is looking pretty grim. It wouldn't be the first Grandmaster to do so this season. True. Yeah, what do you even do here? It's so bad. With the Shadow Step just to finish off the turn from Psycho, he absolutely made the right decision there to bounce back the field contact. J4 knows there's a one-mana field contact plus some additional reduced cards in hand for the turn after. He has to just commit something to fight back. Psycho's going to take a turn off here. Which makes sense again with that field contact being one mana. He can take this turn off to really open up the options for next turn as well. Hello? If this swindle finds the other swindle. He's going to swindle again. I'll finish your sentence for you. Whoa! You know, you're just not meant to win a game of Hearthstone, Sottle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. This feels like one yeah. of them for J4. Yeah, I had one of those against Gia yesterday. It was, it was not very fun. Just throw down an Octo and, like, brain freeze this 2-1. I'm down. Looks good, doesn't he? I don't think he needs to one thief. Doesn't want to use the Og Merchant because he just doesn't need to. Yeah, I mean, that's the question. He doesn't need to, but it is another 2-1 in play. Like, it's more tempo to do that than use the brain freeze, but I don't think he's necessarily going to value it that much. Ooh. Mana Biscuit. Very nice. Kind of like an, uh, an Octa. It's going to leave it. Okay. Fair enough. It's coming back anyway. Oh, look at this hand. Yep. It's disgusting, right? 
Yeah, and with the Octo... You need to Octobot on that turn since it came off the Swindle anyway, so it's just coming back to the original hand. Oh. So you can just set it up. And with the Octo and Mana Biscuit combination, it does gain raw mana, right? Like, even more so. Yep. A4 is going to start to fight back now, pushing onto the board. But 20 cards in deck versus Psycho's now 11 with a one mana field contact turn. <laughs> it's not looking great, is it? Uh, that's so gross. Nine card difference on turn five. Yep. I wonder. I would like to see Psycho, like, weirdly enough. Ah, it's a tough call. Do you, do you think he can just sit back one more turn, right? He should be confident as long as he can kill this field contact. Or oh, do you think he just has it? Initiating overdrive. I think he can chill this turn, right? Yeah, but with the spell damage, is he just going for it? He, if he wanted just the reduction, he could have just used Brain Freeze this turn. Oh, I see what you're saying. It's just used an Og Merchant, right? Mm -hmm. Still have plenty to be able to get there in the end though, right? Still has one Org Merchant, one Shadow Step remaining, so the tools are still there. Can re-dagger this turn. Chooses to re-dagger over investing one mana in the Biscuit. The Biscuit does still gain mana, but he could have used it to obviously gain two on a chosen turn instead of just gaining one, but potentially can get another discount on that in the future anyway. I do tend to agree with just re-daggering in this spot. Dagger is actually a lot of tempo in this matchup. It's also pretty difficult in the scenarios, like, for example, where Psycho is in to even talk about his decision making, because mm -hmm. it's one of those things where he's so far ahead, he can probably do eight Get different things shadow. and still be, be ahead and win. Whereas J4, not quite in the same boat. Everything looks like it costs way too much mana, being at its standard mana cost. <laughs> Actually, imagine paying full cost for a Hearthstone card. Who does that? Noobs. Newton <laughs> Star Combustion. J4 can play the Cult Neil fight this turn if he's feeling scared, and I think he might have to, even with the reductions he's seen so far. I think he's just got to and say, you know what, this, this just has to do enough this turn. Agreed. I'm pretty sure even with that, Psycho could it's probably go for it, right? Too quiet. Muzzle their magic. Care to make a way to friend. There's a step. Ethel on board still, even. Yep. Can we push to step the Ethel replay? Got plenty of minions with plenty of health to be able to throw multiple spell damage buffs if he needs to as well. He still has the You're natural one, right? Though. This does still feel very, very ambitious to me at this point. He does still have another field contact remaining. So I'm not sure he's pushing for actual win the game this turn. I think he's just looking for an efficient card draw on this turn. So I imagine he will just be looking at Shroud instead. He's just looking to win the game next turn, right? And do exactly. everything that ensures yep. that. For example, as I did show you there. And you know what? I'll show you again. Uh, there is still like a Kazakus left, which is very expensive and kind of clunky to, to deal with. So if you can just draw more cards, get some stuff out of there and give next turn an almost guaranteed lethal setup. I like it. Oh, interesting. He's using a Shadow Step on the field contact. I was literally about to raise this point, which is the one issue he's going to run into now is that he's gone so quickly this game, he doesn't actually have that much mana available. And the field contact that he's going to draw is going to cost three at this right. point, right? Which is a problem. He does have mana available because his Garot cost... Wait, wait. His both Garots combined cost one in total. And he cheats a mana with the Mana Biscuit. But he is out of discounts at this point. So he does have to pay full cost for basically the rest of his deck at this point. I think with that in mind, he is uh, choosing to Shadow Step Field Contact instead for efficiency, but that obviously cuts into the damage as well. A bit frustrating for J4. He's 
tough, right? Deal 3 is fine, but there's so many minions already on board, and Psycho's probably just going to kill him next turn. Does that even matter? Spell damage, again, fine, but not great. He's probably just looking for card draw on this one, honestly. Yeah, spell damage shooting star is okay, I suppose, in terms of being able to clear up the board because he can trade middle and then shoot middle again. Yeah, I like this. This is uh, probably the best chance he had this turn. Uh, picked up lifesteal because uh, obviously he didn't end up taking lifesteal shoot, but his fear right now is the plus one spell damage breakpoint, the three breakpoint, which is eight times 324. If there's any world where he could have got above that, that would have uh, potentially uh, saved him some hassle, but was never realistically going to happen at yep. this point. And now Psycho's doing what I would consider a very easy rogue lethal here uh, with the man who he has access to and so few cards in the deck. Man, a biscuit, pen flinger, garot, garot, pen. brain freeze, something. Or pen flinger, yeah, whatever you want. Do your business. Yeah, looks good. Three times eight, 24. Plenty of damage to get there over in the end. Good recognition from Psycho. I think he has clearly put in the hours with the deck. Understanding that the chip damage he got from being ahead early had pushed his opponent uh, below that X3 breakpoint, which is 24. So then he could use uh, cheat the mana that he needed, as I was pointing out. That was the one limiting factor. He had to pay full cost for everything that was left remaining in his deck because his Octobots were gone. So instead of uh, needing damage from Shadow Step, he needed mana from Shadow Step. And that's where stepping field contact twice yep. came into play at the very end of it. Very nicely done. Yeah, well played overall, and Psycho evens up the series, winning the Rogue Mirror. And I believe that means that there's going to be, let me check, Druid and Shaman left for J4 to get a win with. And uh, as I said again, like the Shaman isn't standard quest Shaman. It does run that small uh, couple of elementals, the weapon, uh, double rock biter, double storm strike as well. So there, there's just, I'm just interested to see more of the list. It's not something I've ran too much of uh, in, into ladder, for example, but it looks like as I've just glanced over the matchups, there is going to be the rogue, of course, for Psycho going up against the Druid for J4. Okay, interesting. Yeah, I'm also <laughs> wanting to. Uh, I'm also wanting to get a look at the shaman certainly because I do feel that the Doomhammer lists of Quest Shaman were suboptimal, were pretty bad, honestly, before the nerf came in. But I can get on board with the logic of what's going on there, which is if you have Doomhammer in your deck, if you have Rockbiter in your deck, etc., you have more of a win condition that doesn't involve you getting to Brukhan, right? right? You can just kind of do the Doomhammer thing, and since that's the part of the deck that's very specifically been slowed down, um, that and your anti-aggro tools with Perpetual Flame, I can understand the logic of, of what reasoning that that would now be a better version of the deck. And also, you then factor in Last Hero Sanding concerns, right? Is that you do not need to build a deck against the field. You build a deck that you want to snipe a specific deck with. And Doomhammer is a very good card at sniping specific decks in the uh, in the meta game. So I think it's a smart choice. I'd like to see more of it. But we are going to be going back into the Druid. Uh, Raven facetiously saying that uh, J4 is guaranteed to win. But I will once again point out that Rogue has won just about every game that Rogue has played in the second half of the broadcast. And I think, Raven, you're just stuck in the past. You're going miles back to the first half of the broadcast talking about Druid wins. I'm here living in the present talking about Rogue wins. Well, clearly, this is the uh, best of one decide <laughs> that has become a theme. Yeah, in Grandmaster, so... Uh, and you are right, just glance at the Wait, match. You're, you're talking about best of ones, I'm talking about halfway points. Like, is this just the America's broadcast all of a sudden? What's going on here? Always has been. Um, here something, though, something, trampoline, something, something, monster. There we go, done. That was my long pause, just to really fill it out. But yeah, looking at this, you, you are right. Other than Mirrors, Druid and Rogue have won every single game they've played. Yep. That's a spot. discard. Yep. Oh no. <laughs> yep. Not good. It's so brutal as well, because if you play enough Druid, you know it as soon. There's slight differences in the animation immediately as you play the card as to whether you're going to discard or not. So you just know immediately and you just sit there and wait for the minion to appear and get discarded. It's such a miserable feeling. Good thing here for J4, though, um, if we're going silver lining, which 
I do sometimes, is that he is playing the glow flies, the arbor up, so there's still just the general win condition of get a ton of minions and punch your opponent in the face. Obviously, the majority, if not all the wins we've seen so far today have involved just huge anaconda turns. That's why the card is in the deck. But it's not like the game just ends if he uh, discards anaconda. Mm -hmm. But he is just facing down now this Octobot. We can see that although there isn't field contact available, there is the Shroud plus the Swindle for Psycho. So plenty of ways for him to draw more resources and really accelerate the pace of the game on his side. <laughs> that rope's burning again. Hmm. Really indecisive on this turn. It looked like he'd finally settled on Fungal. I don't know if the alter alternate option is like just Bloom Glowfly this turn, for example, just to try and get on board super aggressively. Um, but honestly, if he can hit Innovate here or Overgrowth here, okay, Overgrowth is a decent pickup. It's a little bit slower than the Innovate would have been. Um, but for example, if he hit Innovate, that's Innovate Glowfly into Bloom Solar Arbor over yes. the next two turns, which is potentially game winning, I which is okay. Which is why I liked that particular curve a little bit more than just going for the smaller Glowfly immediately. Yeah, I was going to be right there with you. I was going to say, I think the way he wins here is going for a very quick Glowfly and then just getting that Solar Arbor done and then just calling that a day. Because otherwise, I think Psycho's hand is just shaping up too well, isn't it? Field contact now and then, double step, even Plunderer to fight back at least some of her board from J4. He has to do this, right? Okay. I think so. I think it's the only play this down here. Like, if only I had my Anaconda. Good lord, that is a very good anti-aggro hand. Yeah. It's gotta yeah. be said. It's just a good hand, full stop, honestly. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I feel like, you know, there's there's tiers of hands, though, and in a lot of matchup, it's feel contact plus anything is a great hand to discount. Certain matchups, you need to add Prize Plunderer into the equation as well to actually have a particularly powerful turn, and this is just double Plunderer, double step. Like, are you yeah. joking? Like, who pulled the lever at Blizzard HQ this morning to just give every rogue player the absolute nuts every single game? Tice had three great draws. Psycho last game went secret passage into prep, swindle, prep, swindle. That was just his passage. <laughs> like, are you kidding me? Now this hand? And although we've seen enough games in Grandmasters already where field contact's bottom four, uh, you know, players just don't get hold of what they need. The, this is showing oh. why people think this deck is as good as it is, right? Because of the, the sheer capability. Do it! Step it! Kill it all! Play the Neophyte! Did he run out Alert of the authorities! This turn's illegal! It is, because I think he whiffed it. Oh, no! Oh, disgusting! It would have been so huge if he killed the last two, too, as well, because he probably actually retains the field contact. Yeah, yeah, the game's just over. He just has that board and his field contact is alive. Like, game's actually over at that point. Genuinely, he can lose from this position now. Like, that is actually, in the truest term, like, no accusation of how good or bad the play was, even though it was obviously terrible, but literally, that yeah, could be a throw. Still a very good turn to follow it up, though. Super aggressive, but no steps left, and only one Neophyte left remaining in the deck. Yeah, he's going to be a little bit afraid now. You are right. Mm -hmm. I'm just looking at, yeah, I was... <laughs> Get psycho. I was going to say, does he ever just throw a Garou in there and push? Because he's only got eight cards left, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think the reason he's doing this is that he spec he expects to get alignmented in the near future, right? So he's just trying to be as aggressive as he, po as he possibly can this turn. 
uh, doesn't want to have to spend one mana on Garot after alignment, right? He wants to do more important things after that point, so just get the damage thrown in there. Because now, what, there's 2, 4, 7, 8, 10, 12, 15 coming straight back the other way. So uh, Garot for plus 3 spell damage would be lethal mm. through uh, alignment at this point. So this is a very clean setup, I think, from Psycho. Oh, yeah, this lack of Anaconda is a big deal, isn't it? Gross, yeah. This game could have looked very different, and it looks like G4 is going to lock in the alignment. Yep. From humble seed Count it again. 3, 5, 7, 8, 10, 12, 15. 3 from Garot will yeah. end the game. Really nice. Okay. Mess from Psycho earlier. <laughs> but a nice recovery. If you're going to mess up, it's important to be able to recover. And I'm not excusing Psycho messing up, of course, but if you like, if you do that and you can recover strong, that will help you win games, as it has done for Psycho there. Good setup. He had, it, he had the Celestial Alignment in mind, had it already set up with the Garot. He wins the game, Rogue wins again. I guess I lose with the Druid. And just to break like all of that down, firstly, like I don't actually have any particular accusation of like, you know, get on with it, you boomer, in terms of the turn that he played, because oh, the point I started freaking out was the point it became correct to use all of your shadow steps, because he also hit the prep for the brain freeze, and the prep for the brain freeze enabled the full clear of every minion on board, which is the only reason why it was good to use all of his shadow steps in that position, right? Because then he can clear the board, protect the field contact. That divergent path came very late so he had to react to a bunch of stuff super late so i'm not not apologizing for the play i'm not defending the play it's bad but it's not like you know just freaking get on with it at the start of the turn why are you roping you idiot level of bad right the after that point the recovery is super good because even if that wasn't a two-turn lethal setup which it was that play still really good for the explanation i was trying to give where you know you have to divert at that point, you know you're going to get alignmented, so you just want as much damage front-loaded into right. your deck as possible because you don't want to pay for it after the alignment. You just want it in there, ready to come out for zero mana. So even if that wasn't a super clean two-turn lethal setup, which it was, that's still really good recognition and really good matchup knowledge from Psycho in that spot. Well, let's dive into game number four. We got to see Psycho on the Rogue, of course, once again, uh, as are the rules of Last Hero standing. J4 going to be on his final deck now, and it is going to be this Shaman. And although, yes, you can see the quest on the left, you can also see Cage Match on the right. And that means there's a Doomhammer, Rock Biters, and um, a card I forgot the name of now because I'm very silly. Uh, the Storm Strikes in the list as well. So it also means there's a Doom Hammer guess coming into the middle of the can that didn't manage to get it out quick enough. I've never kept Cage Match Custodian without also mulliganing into Doom Hammer. It's just the rules. Never happens. I can't the other hand still got off to a pretty good start. Not an absolutely crazy start, but having double Shroud that he can almost like... Okay, this is kind of like coining out double Shroud, because uh, he coins out the Octo, expects it to be able to proc it, and then Shroud on two, Shroud on three. Still very powerful. And once again, like, the lever has been pulled. I don't know, like, who, do, who who's the blame meta on right now? Is it Ball, Cora, Gallon? Like, where have we where have we progressed to at this point? Who's newest? Just pick whoever's newest. <laughs> okay. That's normally the Fair rules, enough. isn't it? Yeah, not sure who is pulling the levers at this point, but the rogue lever is all the way down, assuming the bottom setting is the nuts. Should we blame it on the mystery caster for the Americas coming yeah. up soon? Oh, true. Yeah, let's do that. But technically, the newest. No, it's fair. Yeah, all the resources in the world will be available for Psycho going forward. Is it the turn, Sotl? <laughs> the old bloom hammer. I mean, it's only he's zero, zero. Zero. Excuse me. He's zero from three on the quest right now, though, which is the issue, right? Like, 
sometimes like it's one of the things this deck does which is nutty is that very occasionally you get to turn one bloom bloom doom and then uh, unlock all of that in one go but if you cannot do that i think it's just too much overload to stomach in the and long run he can just do it next turn right he overloaded for one that turn that'll put him at exactly. three mana then he can bloom doom hammer and have a free overload yeah, and because of the way the breakpoint worked, like sometimes you'll still do it right. You can go uh, Bloom, Doom, and then maybe you have one mana left the next turn and you can just Lightning Bolt or Novice Zapper or whatever to yeah. unlock that mana crystals, but that wasn't going to work out with the way this curve worked. Um, so yeah, honestly, I like being a little bit patient here. And honestly, rolling a 110 from his portal, pretty useful in this matchup, got to be said. You'd play this card if you knew you were against Rogue. It's not yep. bad. Unfortunately for Psycho, didn't really get any playables from the Shroud, so can't make use of its secondary effect of giving the minion stealth. Of course, that doesn't give you any real security versus Shaman because of cards such as Perpetual Flame. Mm -hmm. I don't mean exactly, because Lightning Storm exists. Yeah, so there it is. The Bloom Doom comes out, and you go boom boom with the Wind Fury. Might as well push the one at this point as well. Yeah, I mean, I was saying it's a pretty useful trading tool, but until Psycho presents something that's actually worth trading into, you might as well just keep chipping away with that one damage, right? Oh yeah, of course, because again, with the, uh, it's hard to know how much of a race this is because J4 doesn't have any of the weapon buffs yet. But he does have cage match for another Doom Hammer, absolute worst case scenario. So it is important to just push as much as possible. He doesn't want this game to continue. <laughs> okay, that's just funny. So now does he... The perpetual here? And just drop everything? Or drop stuff? I guess he could just trade and then go novice. Cage match hero power? Like, I think he just needs to throw stuff on the board right now. Yeah, I think so too. That's so gross, though. He just didn't draw a card this turn. That's essentially what that means. If that card was any other card in his deck, obviously he still has a Doom Hammer in his hand. But he also has a Rock Biter weapon, or a Storm Strike, or a Lightning Bolt. Like, some actual useful and card that progresses his game plan at this point. Yeah, and just the fact that he kept a 2-drop <laughs> and then played it on turn 5. Yep. Well, there's the proc. Tons of resources available now for Psycho. Does have the reduced mana on that field contact, which is key. Psycho so taking his time. He is going to play field contact. Okay. Does have step. Had, does have step, yeah. We've had Bloom Doom and Boom Boom from J4, but if Psycho wants to actually field contact this turn, he needs to zoom, zoom, and less Boom Boom as he did on the uh, previous turn. I imagine basil. This... <laughs> but I imagine this uh, does end with the Shadow Step on the field contact yep. in most scenarios, right? Unless something particularly attractive rears its head. I think you're right. And then, again, you start to see these play patterns with Rogue, right? So there's this good turn, draw, draw a decent amount of cards, got the one mana contact. Now Psycho's got options between another contact turn or he could just go Secret Passage to dump more cards and probably hit Swindle five times. <laughs> Don't know how that's possible, but Rogue will find a way. <laughs> yeah, but it is. <laughs> it's like the lever's been pulled, remember? Yep. You think it's worth one swing at the hammer to guarantee a perpetual? Means he can Serpent Shrine face, could even just play the Zapper as well and just kind but of go all in. Well, the problem is you don't win the game next turn, right? So if you don't win the game next turn, you need to clear the field contact board that comes down next turn. So if you clear this board with a Perpetual Flame, what are you doing next turn? I think, honestly, you have to largely ignore this board, ship a bunch of damage face, and then save your Perpetual Flame for the following turn. As ugly as that sounds. Mm. Unfortunately, I think you might be right. 
I think it's the only line that even wins sometimes. Gonna stop the neophyte from being bounced by doing this. And then go one face. And oh no! He, yeah, well, no I, I really don't like this perpetual flame. I can understand the logic of taking off the divine shields, right? Bump the divine shield, uh, hit the divine shield on the one three, go face with the other swing, and then just leave it there. But again, like, what's the plan now for this turn that's coming up from Psycho? Just serpent trying the field contact. Leave the rest. Because he's now even overloaded so aggressively that if he wants to use his Doomhammer swings, he doesn't even have the mana to re-equip Doomhammer, right? So then suddenly rock by a weapon, Stormstrike, etc. Those kind of draws are cut off. Kind of though, right? Because he all he can Serpent try next turn and then still have mana for Doomhammer rock by uh, the turn after. If right, 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 but then that, that, that would mean not swinging for four on that next turn when he's playing the Serpent Shrine Portal, right? So technically there's four damage being missed in that equation if there isn't then another Doomhammer being equipped on the following turn. What if, he serpent shrines, if he Serpent Shrines that turn, he only has six mana the turn after, so he can't re-equip a Doomhammer. And oh, sure, 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 because he'll be on it, right? You'll, you'll be on Okay, yep, yep, yep. Give me that. Not what I Meanwhile, <laughs> yep. things have happened on Psycho's side. I know, you'll be on seven, right? Because he'd Serpent Shrine... Sorry. Oh, you are right! No, yeah, yeah my apologies. Yeah, he'd sorry, Serpent yeah. Shrine now, it, without the Neophyte, of course, yes, and then yes, he'd, yes, he'd yes, go yes. into eight with one Overload. Yeah, I'm so, I was so confused. Okay, we're back. You are absolutely correct, <laughs> I apologize. Well, the Overdraft is a huge pickup here, actually, from J4, right? Like, un although it costs more, unlocking four mana is a big deal when he's staring at a four mana Serpent Shrine. Yes, for sure. But again, it, like, it's really difficult. This is the position J4's in, but like clearing two minions is really good or i guess all three minions with a weapon swing really good this turn is that winning him the game probably mm -hmm. not is it slowing down the loss yes like is this all he can realistically do yes oh is he jamming it all face okay i can get behind this leave the contact go face everything <laughs> let's go play like you mean it i'm not even joking at this point like i like i was Oh no, don't let me down, J4. <laughs> You'll be fine, go face. I mean, I suppose the interesting question is there's a one mana contact in the hand. Does that incentivize you or disincentivize you to kill the one that's on the board? Because obviously you know field contact is basically possible for negligible mana either way. But at the same time, do you just always lose the game to double field contact this turn? I guess my question is, do you? Because one field contact is one mana, right? So you'd be on six. Like, how how likely to lose on six mana, I guess, from that point is the question. Right. I think there was a reasonable chance to just go face, honestly, and open up a few more chances at, at lethal. He would have done four, so he would have been one damage off with just Doomhammer, right? He went four extra to face. Yeah. I think the big factor, though, is that on Psycho's turn previously, again, we glossed over because we were arguing about how much mana J4 had, but there was uh, there was a Garot already cast on that turn, so there were bleeds oh, right, already yeah. in the deck, so that's two mana that doesn't need to be played, which is why I'm kind of saying if double contact happens, you probably just die at that point. I was too busy just counting mana. You're completely <laughs> right. I forgot about the Garot, so yeah, completely right. Yeah, that makes a lot more sense oh, now. And Regardless, <laughs> Rogue wins. It's the way of it. It's the way of the day. Psycho takes the victory here. 3-1 over J4. And although, you know, I personally don't particularly have any favorites in general, it's a shame for J4 specifically here because he's the one who didn't keep up with everyone else in that kind of danger zone, right? Tice took a much needed win today. Viper, a much needed win. Same with Letter. Here, Psycho, again, great win for Psycho. And he's gonna boost himself up the, the leaderboard a little bit more due to this victory. But J4 really needed his, this week to go well. 
Yeah, and here's the difference now, right? When we look at the players that have played today, Letter now eight points and counting. Viper, nine points and counting. Tice, seven points and counting. J4, seven points and done, at least for this week. That's the big difference now for J4 in his position. Um, because again, there are players around him. There is Floki, who's seven points, zero points available this week. There's Wama, who's six points, zero points available this week. And there's Bosden, five points, zero points available this week. But the fact that the broadcast is so heavily based around uh, relegation candidates playing off against like playoff locks on the other side, and J4 was the one that did right. not get the job done from the relegation candidates, that is now serious trouble for J4. Yeah, 100%. And it's just... Um, and, and the problem is as well, if you think, well, there's still one more week. And that's true. Like, J4 could just win next week, right? And then we have to look at the position he'd be in after that point. But mm -hmm. the problem is... You can, you're not guaranteed points every week. You could go 0-2, like some of these players you can see, like for example, a Wama in Group D. You could go 0-2, gain nothing, and that's how your GM season could end. And, and honestly, it must be terrifying for any of these players in the lower portion going into that final week. It's going to be Conquest. It's going to be a relatively fresh meta as well. So there's not really as many tried and true deck lists, tried and true lineups that are available. So a lot of pressure heading into the um, the final week next week. But of course, we've still got this week to carry on with. That is going to be our top eight. Yala Viper, Casey versus Psycho, Frenetic Letter, and Gabby and Ty. So the big players to keep your eye on here in terms of the de getting out of that danger relegation zone would be Tice, Letter, Casey and Viper. Again, subtle, all kind of split up. <laughs> yep, they're all split up. They could all make 